How many years in prison would every villain from Mystery Incorporated get for their crimes? And stick around to the end to find out how much Professor Pericles would get in total. If you make a guess right now, I guarantee it's too low. In the series premiere, Beware the Beast from Below, Professor Raffalo disguises as a slime mutant in order to rob the Crystal Cove bank. In the process, he ties up the snooping sewer workers, locks Daphne in the janitor's closet, and attacks her while the gang are in a sticky situation, trying to frame Mr. Fruitmere. In total, Raffalo's gonna get 92 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In The Creeping Creatures, Grady, Greta, and Gunther Gator dress up as the titular Creeping Creatures to conduct their counterfeit Gator goods business. In doing so, they attack a family passing through, steal the Mystery Machine's engine, keeping the gang in Gatorville long enough to chase them down and attack them, and almost kidnapping Velma. All three faux reptiles are going to get 74 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In Secret of the Ghost Rig, Rung Ladderton drives the ghost truck around Crystal Cove, smuggling out crystal doorknobs that he stole throughout the town. The amount isn't explicitly stated, but let's give him, like, 5,000 doorknobs stolen. In his rampage, he speeds around town, chasing a cop and the gang over a cliff, which would potentially lead to their deaths. For the attempted murders, he's getting 5 life sentences, plus the extra 2,522 years for the other crimes. In Revenge of the Mancrab, Bud Shelton dresses up as the Mancrab, attacking multiple beachgoers including Angel Dynamite and a group of kids, kidnapping 4 people in total, Daphne included, and keeping them in a cage underground. He throws that same cage at everyone before starting the chase, nearly piercing them all with his claws. For his crimes, Bud's gonna get 150 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In the Song of Mystery, Marianne Glearden disguises herself as Kei Fico to try and take over the town. She stole the costume from the theater department and bribed the kids to help her scare away the parents, causing the neighborhood to get destroyed. As the catalyst for these events, she's deemed liable and sentenced to 179 years in Crystal Cove Prison. Oh, and all the kids will get grounded for one month as well. In The Legend of Alice May, Alice May dresses up as a ghost in order to crash prom. She kidnaps her date, keeping him tied up while she continues her tirade. In the process, she drops a bookcase on Daphne before chasing her, Shaggy, and Velma through the graveyard before crashing prom with, by my count, 79 people inside, bringing her total sentence up to 100 years flat. In Episode 7, In Fear of the Phantom, Daniel Prezet disguises himself as the Phantom to try and ruin the Hex Girls, dropping a giant speaker on top of Thorn. When Daphne steps in to replace her, she gets kidnapped and is tied up above the stage. During their investigation, he chases Shaggy and Scooby around, but when he can't find them, resorts to lighting their trailer on fire. I'm going to give him two life sentences for the attempted murders, plus another 29 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In the grasp of the gnome, Gil Littlefoot dresses up as the gnome to ruin his wife's business while framing her for everything. He attacks a total of 38 people at the Renaissance Fair with a paralysis-inducing jellyfish toxin. Later, he kidnaps Shaggy and keeps him tied up, before assaulting one last person while on the run, adding a final charge totaling 176 years in the dungeon. I mean, Crystal Cove Prison. In Battle of the Humongonauts, Jax and Max Minner destroy the town in order to sabotage the other's insurance companies. They aren't working together here, so while they both get felony property damage, Jax adds two assault with deadly weapon charges, bringing his total up to 11 years, while Max gets five assault with deadly weapon charges and an arson thrown on top, totaling 32 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In Howl of the Frighthound, Mrs. Wyatt controls the robot Frighthound to get back at the people being mean to her son. To do so, she breaks into the asylum and assaults seven guards, crashes the mystery tour full of people, and chases the gang around an old factory, bringing her total time up to 53 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In The Secret Serum, Sheila Altunian steals various items to try and craft a potion of youth, but all the items turn out to be relatively worthless. In doing so, she scares an entire auction room of 70 people, attacks Shaggy and a gardener, and chases the gang around a wine cellar into a cage that she then locks. Overall, she racks up 248 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In The Shrieking Madness, Howard E. Roberts dresses up as hatecrafty and monster Chargar Gothicon to defend hatecraft's writing from the critics. Naturally, this involves kidnapping hatecraft himself and throwing him off a building. 
In addition to that, he attacks a guy on campus, kidnapping him and keeping him locked up, attacks Harlan Ellison, a fry cook, and an entire auditorium full of people, before knocking Daphne, Fred, and Velma off the roof. His obsession with the monster is going to net him two life sentences plus another 142 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In When the Cicada Calls, Grandma Moonbeam uses thousands of cicadas to create the cicada creature in order to get her revenge on Destroido Corp, attacking three of their employees, including leading one to drive off the cliff, and another one actually flatlines in the hospital. She locks the gang in the Carnival Funhouse, using her cicadas to attack them, ending up with two life sentences plus another 28 years on top. In Mystery Solvers Club State Finals, Jonathan Wellington Muddlemore, aka Funky Phantom, disguises as Lord Infernicus to crash the competition. He kidnaps 17 people, keeping them locked up, intending to sell them to Africa to solve mysteries there. Along with that, he shoots fireballs at Angel Dynamite, Principal Quinlan, Captain Caveman, and Jabberjaw, before trying to run them off the road. But, um, this was all in one of Scooby's fever dreams, so no time, I guess? In the Wild Brood, Maxwell dresses up as the shadowy orc to besmirch the reputation of the other orcs, but takes it a bit too far, hacking into the Crystal Cove Armory security system, allowing him to break in and steal a rocket launcher. He kidnaps Velma and Scooby, eventually pushing them off a cliff while tied up, hijacks a train, and attacks the guards and the conductor. Plus he nearly kills the gang and the other orcs when he shoots the rocket launcher, destroying the bridge ahead. Maxwell here managed to rack up 9 life sentences, plus another 36 years in Crystal Cove prison. In Werewalks Aphrodite, Amanda Smythe dresses up as Aphrodite to brainwash Crystal Cove with her love potion to get revenge for her mistreatment in high school. As you can imagine, laws surrounding brainwashing are a bit unfounded at the moment, so we can really only get her for the property damages and animal cruelty, so just a quick six years. In Escape from Mystery Manor, Danny Arrow traps the gang in Mystery Manor, assuming them to be the old Mystery Incorporated which leads him to try and kill them with various traps throughout the house. I guess technically speaking, the gang did kind of break into his house, so he was just protecting himself. So I'm only going to get him for the animal abuse, because there's no excuse for that. Oh, he died at the end. Uh. In The Dragon's Secret, Mr. Wang disguises as the White Wizard in order to steal the Dragon's Heart Ruby. He assaults a pawn shop clerk, Mai Lee, and the gang with his Tesla coil lightning powers before dropping the mystery machine on them, later dispatching of the Red Wizard and kidnapping Mai Lee to steal a ring, leading to 5 life sentences plus 44 years. Also, Mai Lee's gonna get 3 years for Grand Theft as well, as she was trying to steal the ruby for herself. In Night Fright, Argus Fentonpoof dresses up as the titular Night Fright in order to scare Vincent Van Gogh after he rewrote his original script. He paid the other three monsters to help him, broke into Vincent Van Gogh's house, destroying his stuff as he scared him and the gang. For his actions, he's going to receive 36 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In the Siren Song, Ernesto and the other protesters dress up as the fish freaks to illegally drill for oil to fund their environmental activism, starting with attacking a fishing boat with two guys aboard and kidnapping them. Along with that, they also attack Velma while she's out researching, later kidnapping the gang, Dr. Kavanaugh, and Skipper Shelton, keeping them tied up with the other two fishermen. This cruel bit of irony nets them 150 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In Menace of the Manticore, Marcy Fleech terrorizes the creepy spooky Terraland theme park to steal the steel and create a super helium. She begins with Brenda and Dylan, who get their ride ripped off the track and thrown to the ground. She flies around attacking the gang, eventually picking Shaggy and Scooby up, and dropping them from at least 100 feet up. She tries doing the same with Daphne, but the rest of the gang grab on, later getting saved by Scooby-Doo. Marcy's gonna get 3 life sentences, plus another 77 years. In Attack of the Headless Horror, Marion Spartan tries to scare her husband away from adventuring by disguising as the Headless Horror, attacking him and sending him to the hospital. Also, she breaks into the artifact room, and chases the gang through the hospital, throwing a metal table at them. She's coming out of this one with a 29 year prison sentence. In A Haunting in Crystal Cove, Professor Pericles dons a cloak, turning him into a shadowy figure, so he can break into Mayor Jones's house, scaring him out. As the gang investigates, Shaggy and Scooby get locked in the kitchen, being attacked by a demonic pizza… thing. Meanwhile, the house comes to life, scaring the gang, Mayor Jones, and Lady Marmalade out, 
Daphne gets grabbed and Mayor Jones gets kidnapped, and the gang finds that Pericles did all this to steal the planospheric disc, hacking Fred's laptop allowing him to trap the gang in the basement and fly off. But when we do catch him, he's got 69 years in Crystal Cove prison waiting for him. In Dead Justice, Deputy Buck goes vigilante mode as the ghost of Dead Justice. Although he was rewarded for his efforts, I've never been one to agree with the police, so I'm going to give him assault for every person he brought in, plus making death threats to the gang, so he comes away with 16 years in Crystal Cove prison. In Pawn of Shadows, Alice May poses as the Obliteratrix, using high-tech weapons to help her steal the mystery machine, swapping it with a fake to blow it up along with various buildings around town. She does end up trying to kill the gang, Professor Hatecraft, and Angel Dynamite. Of course, we already know she was in prison and broke out once before, but maybe another 6 life sentences plus 53 more years will keep her in there. Hmm, maybe not. In the Season 1 finale, All Fear the Freak, Fred Jones Sr. dresses up as the Freak of Crystal Cove to try and find the cursed treasure. Years ago, he blackmailed the old mystery gang, forcing them out of town, framing Professor Pericles for their disappearance. But for our new gang, the best he could muster up was breaking into Shaggy's house to attack him, smacking Pericles aside, and stealing a piece of the planospheric disc. Fred's fake dad is going to get a very real sentence of 34 years in Crystal Cove prison. In the season 2 premiere, The Night the Clown Cried, Crybaby Clown terrorizes Crystal Cove while the gang try and get their mojo back. He rips around town destroying buildings and tossing bombs, which lead to Sheriff Stone's car flipping. He nearly runs Fred over with his hot rod wagon, and crashes the town hall meeting demanding ransom, blocking their exit as he drops a super stink bomb. He does go without capture here, instead blowing up the fireworks factory, but I have a feeling he'll be back soon. And we'll have a cell at Crystal Cove prison reserved for him for the next 208 years. In the House of the Nightmare Witch, Curator Vronsky puts on the Baba Yaga disguise to smuggle stolen Fabergé eggs into the country. He breaks into the museum at night, assaulting the guard on duty, kidnapping him and later Anna too, keeping her locked in the house. When the gang investigate, he tries to scare them off, attacking Marcy, Shaggy, and Velma with his club, and evading Sheriff Stone, bringing his total sentence up to 57 years. In The Night the Clown Cried 2, Tears of Doom, Crybaby Clown is back and turns out to be Baylor Hotner, who's method acting for a new movie role. No, really. He breaks into a psychiatrist's office and kidnaps him with three other people, nearly running Shaggy and Scooby over on the way out. Later that night, he almost runs over Fred and Daphne as well, later kidnapping Daphne and keeping everyone tied up on a plane he stole. Oh, and his hot rod was stolen too. After a duel with Shaggy and Scooby, he ties them up too, bringing his total sentence up to 94 years. In Web of the Dreamweaver, Horbert Feist builds a machine to project himself as the Dreamweaver in other people's dreams. Since most of the action did take place in dreams, not much I can do about that. But he did loan himself money from his own bank to fund his endeavor, as well as causing damages to the town and lighting buildings on fire, giving him a nightmare sentence of 51 years and a million dollars in fines. In the Hodag of Horror, Ned Fussbuster trains his monkey Roberto to be the Hodag of Horror, terrorizing the town and stealing valuable items. He attacks Daphne's sister and steals an expensive necklace, attacks the gang and the party the Blakes are throwing, leading to the kidnapping of seven people. I'm not going to charge the monkey here, but I am holding Ned liable for the robbery and the assaults, resulting in an even 50 year sentence for him. In Art of Darkness, Butch Furbanks operates Junk to get revenge on Randy Warsaw by ruining his art exhibits, driving away guests while kidnapping Eco. He attacks Randy and Scooby before kidnapping two more people, and attacks the gang while crashing another exhibition. In total, he winds up with 109 years in Crystal Cove Prison. In The Gathering Gloom, Evala von Meanskrieg dresses up as the Graveyard Ghoul to scare away people from the cemetery, where his illegal gas theft is taking place. I counted 29 people watching the film, plus the rest of the gang and the Bjorklin girls in their house, plus trying to attack Velma and Scooby while chasing Sheriff Stone. For all the trouble, he managed to get a sentence of 123 years. In Night on Haunted Mountain, Marcy Fleets returns, this time as Dark Lilith, to find a piece of the planospheric disc for Mr. E. In the process, she attacks two guys hiking and steals their soccer ball before destroying the town below, which includes collapsing the mine and the entire town catching fire when she accidentally pulls the ship off the mountain with the gang on it. Given she was already in prison, we can tack on another 72 years to her sentence. 
In Grim Judgment, Gary and Ethan dress up as Hebediah Grimm in order to stage attacks on couples to save the girlfriends and court them. Unfortunately, cringe isn't a felony offense, but I can get them for the assaults with a deadly weapon, assaulting a police officer, destruction of property, and generally threatening everyone involved, racking up a nice 54 years each to work on their social skills. In Night Terrors, Dan Flunk dresses up as the Fiend to drive people away from the library to force it to close. He starts with a family of three and their dog, and eventually turns to the gang, attacking Daphne and Velma in the process. In this parody of The Shining, he still somehow manages to come out better than Jack Torrance, only receiving 36 years behind bars. In the Midnight Zone, Professor Pericles controls the Creek staff of bots to get the last piece of the planospheric disc he needs. When attacking Cassidy Williams, the radio station explodes and burns down. Then, once the gang and two scuba diving kids are in the submarine, he tries crashing it to kill them with the self-destruction of the underwater base. Cassidy stays behind to save everyone, actually dying as a result. Now Pericles has blood on his hands. Er, wings. Again, he still gets away, but we can add another 7 life sentences, plus 40 more years onto his totals. In Scare Bear, Vincent Furman dresses up as the Scare Bear to get his revenge on Destroido for his disfigurement, stealing various company secrets. He attacks the mayor and the sheriff before tracking down the gang in the labs to try and slice them with his claws. Hope it was worth it because Benson's gonna get 50 years in Crystal Cove prison for it. In Wrath of the Krampus, Jason Wyatt controls Charlie the Robot, disguised as Krampus, spreading the holiday spirit by scaring children, knocking them over and kidnapping them, breaking into the prison to kidnap Marianne Glearden, assaulting Fred and some guards. But he's not staying in jail, as it was all a ploy to send a message to Mr. E. Everyone was in on it, so no time served for this one. In Heart of Evil, Dr. Zinn controls the dragon, which is fused with his daughter Jenny Zinn, in order to steal the Questex power source. They break into the lab and attack a security guard, who later turned into Blue Falcon, and eventually kidnaps him and Scooby, keeping them tied up. They fly off with their jetpacks, leaving their island to explode as the gang escapes. We'll eventually track them down, and they'll be handed a 40 year sentence each. In Theater of Doom, George Avocados That's Avocados! dresses up as the mummy of Friar Sarah to find his father's stolen diamond. To do so, he halts a rehearsal, attacking two producers and destroying the set. As she looks for clues, he chases Velma and attacks her. During the play, he attacks Shaggy and two viewers before his capture, and his subsequent 52 year sentence. In Aliens Among Us, Traveler, Sheila, and Connor O'Flaherty dress up as aliens in order to continue their robbery spree. They break into one of the mall stores, scaring the gang and Sheriff Stone away later that night. They also break into Daphne's house, stealing her dad's rare prized car, driving off with it. For this, our three Irish lads are going to get 25 years each in Crystal Cove Prison. In The Horrible Herd, Professor Pericles creates this weird piranha cow bee nightmare to destroy the town starting with these two farmers, eventually expanding his palette to the other farmers in the gang, attacking the former. I'm not sure if they died here, but I also wouldn't be shocked. Back in town, they collapse a bridge, chasing everyone back into town to continue their rampage. With everyone nearly safe, Pericles has Brad Child shoot a rocket launcher at the helicopter containing the gang, Mayor Nettles, Sheriff Stone, and Nova to kill them. So let's add 219 more years and 4 more life sentences to Pericles' time, and 6 life sentences plus 6 years for Brad. In Dance of the Undead, Rude Boy and the Scottastics dress up as zombie versions of themselves, brainwashing Crystal Cove into enjoying their music. They attack and kidnap their manager, Chrissy Christie, and Trini Lee, keeping them all locked in a coffin. When the gang saves the manager, the zombies attack Velma and chase them all out on their zombie Vespas. For their crimes, they're going to receive 60 years each in Crystal Cove prison. In The Devouring, Francis Lee Jackson disguises as the Gluten Demon to destroy the restaurants of Crystal Cove. In the process, she hits Rick Spartan and Fred, before scaring Shaggy away from the pizza. Later, she chases Daphne, Velma, and Kachinga, grabbing his leg before being beaten back. In her final stand, she has a sumo battle with Shaggy and Scooby, eventually being squished. This Gluten Demon's gonna have a steady diet of bread and water in prison for the next 32 years. In Stand and Deliver, the librarian dresses up as Dandy Highwayman to rob people driving through town. He also has the thing for blowing up their cars too. 
I count six cars total here before he breaks into the Blake residence. And, during a town hall meeting, he shows up, running Sheriff Stone over before robbing another nine people, bringing his total up to an impressive 328 years in prison. Hopefully he brings a couple books to read. In The Man in the Mirror, Brad Childs and Judy Reeves get plastic surgery to look like a fake Fred and an old Daphne in order to find the planetary disc. Brad kidnaps Fred, switching places with him while keeping him trapped in a movie set version of Crystal Cove. Brad and Fred have a final battle, earning Brad an additional 21 years in prison, with Judy receiving three for the false impersonation. Pericles also shows up briefly to kidnap Daphne, adding to his already absurd totals. In Nightmare in Red, Fernando Alighieri dresses up as the monstrous freak to scare the gang, chasing them through a labyrinth of Crystal Cove's memories to try and stop them from learning of the evil entity. Unfortunately, all this happened in a dream sequence, so not exactly able to hold up in court. So, no time given. In Dark Knight of the Hunters, Enrique Andalosa Sosa dresses up as the priestess to lure Miss Dinkley and the gang to Mexico, while also looking for the heart of the jaguar. In doing so, he attacks her and the gang, receiving five and a half years in Mexican prison, and I'll throw a hundred thousand peso fine on top for trespassing an ancient Mayan ruin. In Gates of Gloom, the old mystery incorporated gang of Brad, Judy, Mr. E, and Pericles kidnap the entire town of Crystal Cove, forcing them to work in the mines. At one point, Shaggy says there's thousands of people down there, so how does 5,000 sound? Eh, works for me. When the gang investigates, the Creek Staffabots break into Fred's house, trying to kill the gang, adding four life sentences onto their grand total of 60,009 years in prison. In Through the Curtain, both the old and new mystery gangs travel through the caves to find the sarcophagus of the evil entity. Pericles orders one of his Creek Staffabots to throw Daphne at the door, which was definitely powerful enough to kill her. Along with that, they're holding Marcy hostage, and Judy chips her up, which leads to her execution. Mr. E and Brad will add 11 years to their total, Judy gets 17 years, and Pericles is receiving another two life sentences, plus 11 more years. In the series finale, Come Undone, Pericles opens the sarcophagus of the evil entity, who rewards him by immediately eating and killing him. The evil entity also attacks Scooby, kills Brad, Judy, and Mr. E before kidnapping and killing some of the townsfolk. Eventually, Evil Entity's sarcophagus turns into a black hole, enveloping the entire universe, creating a new timeline. Given that this is the series finale, for now at least, uh, let's call it 8 billion murders. There's no prison left to send them to, so I banish the Evil Entity to the Shadow Realm, never to return. And before the end of the video, let's go ahead and tally up what Professor Pericles' sentence would have been. After countless menacing charges, assaults, animal abuse, kidnapping, false imprisonments, hostage takings, breaking and enterings, theft, arson, slavery, attempted murders, and actual murders, Professor Pericles takes top spot for the most evil character in animation, racking up 17 consecutive life sentences, plus an absurd 60,356 years on top of that. And that finally concludes the legal analysis of Mystery Incorporated. This one had some of the most insane sentences yet, but it was incredibly fun to go back through the series like this. And this will be the final legal analysis video, at least for now. Next up, I have a critical analysis of the first Saw movie that I'm very proud of, so I hope you stick around for that. But until then, uh, bye.